Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Amun Shaktivel, and in this video, we are going to continue with our re code refactoring series. And in the last video, I have mentioned that I'll I'll take time to create the locators, and uh, yeah, I have done that now. And we will take a quick recap on that uh, before we head further, right? So, for example, we are in customers page, and uh, we actually want to click on the add new button so that we gets navigated to the add new customers page, right? So I need to click on this. And when I try to do the locators, I make sure you know I have uh, used a normalized space because uh, this particular uh, piece of, uh, uh, you know, locator is, is actually having a uh, spaces, right? So maybe one or two spaces extra, right? So this might not really work if you use contain sticks. So I have used normalized space, which means it will uh, trim the spaces in front as well as in the back okay so so that you know it will work right so you have already verified with uh, the, the locators you can use normally space right the same way if you want to click on export you know you can create a one more method called click export and then instead of uh, add new you can give export that right so that you can use a single locator for two different buttons so yeah so after this once you click on that so it's basically returning you a add new customers page and uh, here again, we have already created an X path uh, the day, and uh, that looked something like this, right? And this is what the you know we have created the day, and it was working for email, uh, password, first name, last name, and all that. But for date of birth, there was a small difference. Okay, so if I go and just change this to date of birth, it is not working. So date of birth, it was not working. So when I when I tried to inspect and all that, uh, I understood there is one extra span class in between. So what I did, um, I I added you know a double slash right, and maybe sometimes they they may change this uh, tag name as well. So I thought I will also replace this with star, okay, so that it matches almost all, all the fields here, okay. Definitely it will not match the select tag and all that. So you know I have make sure you know it, it covers most of this, okay. So I have. Uh, instead of using this particular X path, I have replaced the uh, wildcard here for the tag, and then I have added this uh, double slashes so that it is relative. It won't check just one level down. It will also check further levels as well, right? So that I can reuse this for a text box email, a password, and then for the radio button, right? And here I have not created for all of them uh, because uh, the reason being, you know, it will take a lot of time for me to create all that. So I have picked something really unique. Uh, maybe I'll, uh, you know, if needed, we will create for more locators. But for now, my intention is to tell you guys how to approach these kind of problems and not about automating this entire application, right? So now this is a typical code that anyone will write. Okay, so they may accept an email field. They will construct the dynamic X path. They will send keys to the email field, right? The same way for the password. And for radio button, they may pass, is, is it a mail? Uh, you know, a Boolean value, if it is true or false. Again, as I told, in methods, if you pass a Boolean, your method tends to do two different things. One is this, and another one is this. So whenever you're passing a Boolean, it is a little tricky to operate, but yeah, uh, we will try to optimize this, but this is how a typical coder would code, right? So, uh, and then uh, you'll, you'll wait and click for it, right? So, so we have developed until here. So uh, we will try to execute the test. And if I go to the, uh, basically the test cases at customer test and uh, we have perform login and uh, login is using this data and we are navigating to the customer's page and after that we are clicking on add new button which basically gives me back an option to you know basically send email and this is my email maybe right at gmail.com whatever and uh, after that i also want to do text box uh, password and this is my password right and and set a radio button i need to pass say the true or false i am passing through right i don't know why this alignment is something like this yeah yeah so you would do something like this but if you notice these are all very small details right previously we wrote set username set password and login and then we what we made we, we went to the login page we we have made all these things as private and then only expose perform login which internally does these things right so that we only get the high level of details right and we have actually made some mistakes so what i need to do so this is a 
just not having any uh, access modifier so that means it's a default so what i can do i can basically make this one as private right because these are all internal to this class so it is it makes really sense to basically uh, you know uh, change them to private okay okay i think the shortcuts is colliding with the shortcut of zoom so i'm just changing myself to private final again guys there is no reason why i should not keep them as final because i'm not changing them anywhere so i want to keep them as final and if you also notice this this expats are mostly common for all the threads right so it also makes sense i i, I change them to static right there is a reason behind why i'm changing them to static i'll explain them now uh, see if if you are running a test in parallel if you are running 100 test in parallel uh, you might have 100 login page objects right to access these are uh, non static methods if you have 100 non static objects okay they'll all have its own uh, you know a text box email text box password and login right so all these things so 100 into 3 will be 300 different memories are occupied in your java so instead if we have static so all these 100 threads will make use of this right for all the 100 threads it will have only one static variable right so it is common for all the threads right so definitely uh, you know if you are using parallel execution definitely go for a final static one so that you know you save your memories right it will help you if you are running it in selenoid or aws lambda and, the, and all other stuff right good and what we can else do now um, let's go here and these are all very small things okay what we can do uh, maybe we will create uh, uh, something called as okay uh, public uh, maybe i will keep white for now uh, fill uh, personal details form or fill form maybe right fill form or create new customer whatever right create new customer i am really not bother about what it internally does basically it uh, it needs a string a email string password or whatever what is this email password and yeah email password and uh, Boole, sorry guys, it's boolean is mail, right? And yeah, once you are you are you're getting this, what I want to do, I want to call set uh, text box email, and then pass this email, right? And then I can do the chaining now, with password, right? And at the end, set radio button, right? And is mail, right? So now with this, I can chain them and i will change them to all private so that they can not access this from the test layer directly right so if you want to make individual use of these methods then obviously make them as public otherwise there is no need to make them as public so instead i can just say create new customer and pass all these fields right so again uh, some value at gmail.com and what else we have guys this is not a effective approach we still have to do uh, some better approach okay and uh, let's say it's true okay so go, go here let's also check uh, this one as well so private static final right and yeah again guys uh, static final sorry private static final string and it's better if you are using uh, you know final static keywords you, you use uh, capital letters right so uh, we have already mixed that so text box uh, so if we if we directly change it so i'll shift an r and text box see it's suggesting me this yeah the same way shift an r, it's a radio butter general Okay, so we can change like this, right? So that it's more readable now. And we are also following the convention. The same way, we can also go ahead and basically change this here. So text box email, password, but all right, all good. So let's go here and yeah, let's try to check whether this is working till here before we continue to change on this, right? Again, guys, this is not a good approach. We are passing this data like this. Uh, this is not a good approach. We will try to optimize this now. Okay. So if you find this video a uh, little slow, please change the playback settings to 1.5 or 2 so that you don't feel any slowness. 
we are going to cover some interesting topics in this framework development so don't miss it so if you guys notice it has actually clicked on mail everything is looking fine yeah all good now let's try to optimize this test again uh, you cannot directly feed it here we will use a data provider to feed the test data so what i'm going to do uh, i use a data provider uh, for this test uh, let's name it as this and i'll create the data provider like this first approach uh, first approach is i can pass all these things right so if you notice there is login user email login password and then there is create new user email and then the the new password for the new customer right so there are multiple things okay if you if you pass something uh, uh, with each and every field let's say you are doing uh let's say this one okay you are passing something like this and then you are also passing this right you, you do not know what and all is mapped to what right again you need to tell a string email and string uh, password and string new user email like that you need to differentiate again if you are having 100 test data you are method needs to be 100 you know your method parameters test method parameters will be 100 this is not a really good approach right so we don't want to do this then how will you optimize this okay i don't want to do this because the number of uh, columns you have in your in your uh, you know stuff will be the number of parameters to your test method again if you have not watched my data provider video please do watch that where i have explained this in detail so we're not going for this approach okay then what else we could do maybe we could wrap these information in a form of map okay amudan i didn't understand okay so what you can do i can create something like map dot off i am using java 11 guys if you are using java 8 this might not work so i you know the soft method is a, is a is a static uh, method that helps me to create a implementation for map right so what i can do uh, i can map, i can create it as a map so map or you know this the email is this okay okay and and this is the password okay so i'll use password password so for now i am just using only these two so okay so this basically gives me a map right uh, so maybe map 1 and i can mention this here right you can pass map one okay and here you will receive a map string comma string and this can be called as a data but the problem with this approach is data so now we have optimized this so even though you will have hundreds of data you will have only one parameter to the test method that's fine but if you notice if i want to fetch the email i need to type data dot get and then i need to know the email exactly so i need to pass exactly like this if i pass email like this it will fail it will give me an null pointer exception so there is a little bit of problem with this again suppose imagine you have one key and the value is let's say it's not a let's assume it's not a um, you need to change this to object okay when you change this to object okay you need to also make sure whenever you are using this your type casting you know you are doing you know you have to really worry about what is this data type is all about okay whether it is an integer whether it is a double whether it is of reference type you no know, you need to make sure you are doing right conversions right and again this is a problem you know two years before i thought this is the best approach but now this may not be the right approach okay there are still you know ways to improve it so how will i do this let's create a class uh, that's under the entity package uh, it's a, it's a pojo we're going to create a pojo called as test data okay and we're going to put all the stuff there okay so the first one we have is uh, login email okay and the second one we have is login password and uh, string uh, user email and so yeah string user password okay and then at the end we also have sorry that's a boolean so boolean 
he is male okay so we have something like this right and uh, all of them i want to make it as a oh guys the multi select option okay so now what i can do the shortcuts is not working guys oh the zoom shortcut is colliding with mine okay i'll type it manually so private uh, private I need to fix that shortcut be later yeah so i'll have all these things as private fields and i'll expose the getters and setters okay i'll use getters uh, and uh, setters maybe i don't need the setters maybe i'll use a builder pattern so i maintain the immutability again guys i have made a separate video on how we can use uh, builder pattern okay uh, what is builder pattern and why we need to use builder pattern what is immutability uh, why we should avoid setter methods and all that so please do watch that uh, uh, you know design patterns playlist so that you can understand what i'm doing here now we're going to use builder pattern to construct a object for this particular test data okay so what i'm going to do i go here and instead of doing all these things okay i'm just going to basically do test data okay dot builder dot now i get an option okay whether i want to pass all these things i can also do one simple tweak uh, maybe uh, while setting it okay using set or prefix i can use a prefix as set so that i can basically use set login email my login email is basically okay i have removed that completely okay i don't remember that either so what i can do is basically go here log out i will i'll fetch the data i i just did it so admin at your store.com so this is the particular data so, yeah. okay and set login password okay the admin is the login password and then you also have set user email you can pass whatever the email you want to do again you can use faker you can use fixer factory to create this uh, test data object we'll come to that later but yeah set user password whatever the user password you want to give and at the end set is mail and this is true okay once you are done with this you can also use build method to build this particular object right so now you have first test data already right so we have used to build a right so now this is yeah so you can pass the test data here once you pass this here also it will become test data right and here you can just tell data dot get login email now you don't have to really worry about the spelling right email or capital email or whether it is user email you don't have to really worry about the spelling now right uh, you don't end up getting a null pointer exception and using a builder pattern you also uh, make sure that if you want to you know uh, this is not a mandatory field or this is not a mandatory field you want to miss it okay there is no issues you can directly remove it right so it will still work this is an object without an uh, user password field right so you can basically uh, uh, maintain immutability as well as uh, have the control of what and all test data you need to use for this particular test case so that's the power of builder pattern data provider and using a pojo now the same way i can also do data dot get login password right and the same way i could do this so it's data dot uh, get user email data dot get user password data dot get you know whatever is is me okay so now see again guys this is also a bad practice i'll tell what is a good approach to do this but yeah so what i'm doing i'm basically doing uh, you know fetching all these values and passing to this first let's check whether this is working uh, i'll make sure i'm removing all the unused imports let's try to run the test ng test and see whether it is working 
Okay, this is also there is a there is a code small here. We will try to fix that. Okay. Fine, guys. We are slowly improvising, right? So good. Okay, the test is launched. Customers clicked. Add new button. Yeah, everything is working. Absolutely fine, right? Now it's time to refactor, right? Slowly we should improve, right? So don't try to write the first time itself in effect code that might not be really possible. So what I told, uh, there is a code smell here, right? If you notice this perform login method just needs these two things, right? And this create new customer, these, the, you know, needs these, these three things, okay? What we are doing, we are extracting uh, some values from an object and then feeding here, okay? And we're also extracting some values and then feeding it here. So you separate a few properties from an object to feed it to another method. This is not a good approach, right? You can pass this whole thing, right? You can pass this whole thing. But if I pass this whole thing, this method doesn't even need this, right? Then what is a good approach, right? Let me go to the test data. And then instead what I could do, I could group these two things together and I could also group these three things together. Okay, I didn't understand, okay? How will you do this? Let's go and create a new class. Uh, let's call this as login data. And this login data will only have these two fields, right? Okay. And you can also add all these things, okay? Whatever uh, the getter method and the builder method, whatever, right? How you want to create this. And uh, you can also import this. The same way, uh, this particular test data will have a private login data, sorry, login data, login data, okay? Same way, I can remove this, th these three, create a new class, okay? And this will be personal data, or personal details, whatever. So I'm using data here, so yeah, that's fine. So yeah. And here again, I will use getter methods to get the values. I will use builder methods to build the objects, right? And let's go here. Uh, let's remove all the unused imports. And here, private personal data, personal data. Okay. Now we go here, and while building it, okay. First, I need to build. Instead of building like this, first uh, test data or we can build it step by step. So login data. Guys, don't worry about this. We have fixture factory so that we can degenerate all these things easily, okay? This is just an in incremental approach. We are going step by step, okay? So for this, a login email, I will use uh, this particular login email. Okay. Yeah. And the login password is admin, okay? Once you do this, you will get a build this, okay? You will get a login data. Maybe I'll leave name this login data. Okay. Once you're done with this, next it's time to build personal data. So personal data dot uh, builder dot user email. So whatever the email you want. And user password, all these things I'll copy it. Maybe I didn't use user password. Set. Okay, let's remove this. I didn't use the set method, that's the problem. Okay, let's go and do it. Test data person now. Set our prefix equal to set. Uh, now I could use, okay, set user email, set user password, and then okay, and build. Once you're done with this, you can now create this data object. And introduce variable that is personal data, and here is data. 
dot builder dot set login data of login data set personal data of personal data or dot build right so this way you can create a test data and you can pass this here right obviously fine so we are we are going a step by step guys again we have fixture factory i have already covered this in nested playlist please watch that so we will be optimizing this with the help of fixture factory and we will generate all these values in in random okay we don't have to type them manually for now that's fine now we will get this and here instead of doing all these things the to the perform login method i will just pass data dot get login data okay here i will pass data dot get uh, personal data right i go here i optimize this uh, login data login data right and here you can again split them into login data dot get login email data dot get password right this is how we can optimize let's go to the test again create new customer and instead of this you have personal data personal data personal data or get user email get user password yeah so this way we have again optimized this so now our code looks much clean than before previously we used to part five to six data we have hard coded data so now it's much easy and we have managed them very well right even in the test data class we only have two two you know things right and these things are all again grouped so i know if there is something related to login data i will change here something related to personal data i change here the the reason we are we are having you know not maintainable test in automation many people come and tell me hey amudan i don't know how to maintain my test it's because you are not following all the good practices that's why you cannot maintain the test okay so now let's try to run you know the code and check whether it is working okay what are the optimization we do at the end it has to work otherwise there is no you know benefit again there are still lot of scope for improvement what are the way we are doing it's okay to some extent we will we'll try to optimize this even further oh man my internet is really bad okay okay click done customers click done add new as well yeah it entered everything is working absolutely fine so this is good right so this is working this is uh, looks neat as well but there is still scope for optimization what is that so if you notice this perform login we are passing this here and then this method is also passing this here this method is also passing this this again these methods as i told in a method if you have a method that doesn't accept any parameters that will be more than good so what i can do i can create a constructor okay i already have a constructor but uh, i'm going to create a parameterized constructor that is login page that accepts login data okay login data okay once you do this okay i'll have private fields here private uh, string i think guys we'll we'll put this in right order just give some time okay private string we have uh, uh, email private string password and then private string yeah that's it only we have two things okay so now here we can tell this dot email equal to login data or get login email okay then this dot password login data dot get password right now with this okay i don't have to even pass this here okay can remove this can just mention email right or this dot email whatever and here also i can remove this i don't have to pass it because it's been passed from the constructor itself right so i don't have to really play around with this instead of passing to the method i'll initialize these uh, private fields with the help of constructors that's the purpose of constructors right so let's go there and and pass this here with login data right instead of this 
so while you pass the pass it to the constructor it will actually set all the fields for you right so that you, can, you don't have to really worry about it while calling the method so our methods becomes more clean now right so that's what we are intended to do and if you notice here this this order is you know a little bit messy so what i can do um, i can just uh, actually this is fine right and it's still throwing some error i don't know why but we should work so login data is everything is fine i don't know why it's still throwing error okay that's fine now instead of this new login page what i can do as i already told this is not readable what is new login page and i don't know i don't know what is this so what i can do i can still optimize this as let me create a static method so we are replacing a constructor with a static method called here okay private static and it's going to return me a login page and uh, what i'm going to do is uh, using or with I, i'll create a method called as with that basically accepts login data and login data here what i will do i will uh, create so i'll make my constructor as private and i call it from here so return new login page of login data dot uh login it okay whatever so now this with method will do everything for us okay we don't really need to bother about it so let's go here and instead of writing new login page now i'm going to write login page dot uh okay let's go there and let's make it as public so that everyone can access this okay and let's go here again to the test with with whatever with my login data so i i want to create an instance okay create or initialize my login page with or using you can use using as well uh using uh, using login data and yeah everything is now set right so i i have used using good so this is how we can optimize your test now our course, login page dot okay i want to login page go to login page i want to initialize this using this login data and i want to perform the login right this is now more readable right again if you notice here this is very intricate level details perform login navigate to add customer page i want to combine these two methods into one just one method something like uh, more readable that is add new customer right because as a product owner or a business analyst i am not interested in what you are clicking here right clicking operation should be avoided in the in the test layers so we will do with the help of facade design pattern but we'll do that in the next video thanks for watching guys i hope you all have enjoyed and learned something new today um, if you also feel that you have you know learned something new today please leave that in the comments so that others know about it please share it with your friends about the channel as well thank you guys you all have a very good day tata bye bye